Um, in here already I've got um, my apples because I'm not using the frozen fruit and they've just been on the heat for a little bit. The ingredients sheet I've put on the classroom for you um, and it is on that board there. It's really simple ingredients but the one that it uses frozen fruit on um, the one that Miss McGivney's given me and that tends to mean like blackberries, raspberries and things like that but I don't like them so I like apples. I've chopped, I've got eight Granny Smith. I'm just gonna show you how to really easily chop this so that you just have the core out without having to use a corer thing. Um, so I just cut down like the side of the core and then I turn it, cut it, turn it, cut it, turn it. And then you're just left with the core that you can get rid of. I would cut the fruit quite chunky because otherwise it goes too mushy. Um, and then the crumble, it tends to like sink into it. So, and I've, all I've done in this pan here with the apples is a tiny, like tiny bit of water and a sprinkle of sugar to give it some sweetness. And the ones that have been in here a while are looking like softened, but not mush. Okay, and the other ones I'll just leave in there to cook for a bit. So there's eight Granny Smiths in there. For the crumble, oh, I've got two um, dishes because I haven't got one big one, but it does make quite a lot of crumble. If you get any questions at any point, um, girls, then just like jump in and ask me, okay? So for the crumble, there is 120 grams. It says unsalted butter, butter, but I tend to use salted butter because I think it brings out the flavor of everything else. Um, 240 grams plain flour, not self-raising, otherwise you'll end up with a cake on top. Um, and 120 grams of sugar. I would keep a bit of this back or just have some extra on the side to sprinkle on the top because it makes it really nice and um, crispy. I've also got some cinnamon, which is not on the list, but I like it in an apple crumble. And I've just got sugar there to sprinkle on top. So to make the crumble, you need a bowl and it's the rubbing in method. So I've kept my butter in the fridge the whole time. Um, otherwise it goes too mushy and it's really hard to do. So I am gonna use a knife to chop it up. It doesn't have to be a sharp knife. I've just got it here from my apple. Um, and then it's easier to rub in. I'm guessing you did rubbing in in year nine when you made different types of cakes. You would use it for shortbread um, and other sort of biscuit based things. Cakes tends to be more the creaming method, um, like when we did the pineapple upside down cake. So I would just get that into like little cubes into the bowl and then you need to put the flour in. You don't need to sieve the flour because to be honest, any sort of lumps and bumps are good in the crumble because um, it gives it a bit of texture. Just gonna stir in my okay, so into there now I'm gonna tip all my flour. So that's my 240 grams of flour. In there. Okay, and then what Miss Buchanan always used to say about the rubbing in method is that you don't wanna have any on your palms. Um, you just wanna use your fingers but I can never keep my palms clean. So <laughs> so it's basically picking it up and rubbing it in, as in, you know, that's why it's called the rubbing in method. Um, you can break it up like that, um, or you can do that kind of thing with it. Um, if you've got a food processor, you can cheat and just put it in the food processor and it'll blitz up the butter, but the butter has to be cold for it to do that, because otherwise it's just gonna turn into um, like a cake kind of mix. So we rub, rub, rub. Um, there's loads of different fruits you can um, use for a crumble. Uh, rhubarb is really nice. Some people combine different fruits, like rhubarb and apple is nice. Rhubarb and blackcurrant, blackberry. Um, loganberry, if you haven't heard of a loganberry, you can look that up. Some people make gooseberry crumbles. Gross. Um, but basically, I think as long as you put lots of sugar in, <laughs> then it's totally fine. Um, rhubarb is one of my favourites, but that can be quite a sharp fruit, so that one really needs lots of sugar. Um, but I think apple is my favourite, and like I said, I like to add cinnamon to my apple crumble. Um, or you could add cloves, um, not too many, because it's quite a strong taste. Um, sort of like a winter spice, because it's quite a sort of winter comfort food. You could serve it with custard, or ice cream, or cream, or all of them. If you're my kids, they like ice cream in custard, which is weird. Okay, so I'm starting to get the sort of crumbly texture. Hope you can see that. Um, I've still got some quite big lumps of butter. So I'm gonna carry on rubbing them in. 
um, and then once it's quite even, almost like breadcrumbs, then you would add in the sugar. Um, some people will add various different things to the crumble mix, like oats for a bit of texture, um, add to the flavour. Um, you know, you can have a think and add, a think about whatever you want to add, really. Um, if you're doing a savoury crumble, like um, sometimes, like if you do a cauliflower cheese bake or um, broccoli bake, then you could put a savoury crumble on the top. You'd obviously miss out the sugar. Um, but then you would put, like, maybe um, toasted breadcrumbs or cheese, that kind of thing. Okay, so that's all right. I'm just going to take my apples off the heat. Oh, my hands jumped out and turned my hob off. I'm just going to wash my hands because it does get all over you. Because you don't need to use your hands for the sugar bit, you can just stir that in. So. Um, this is what it's looking like at the moment. I could mix it in longer, but I don't want you to just sit and watch me for hours. So, sugar, 120 grams. You'll find that different crumble recipes um, use different amounts of sugar. This is quite a lot of sugar, but that's fine. Um, the sweeter the better, I think. So, just use my spoon to mix that in. Okay. It's really straightforward to be honest to crumble if you're using the frozen fruit you would put it in the pan just to heat it up to defrost it um it doesn't need to be cooked because it's going in the oven for half an hour so the oven is preheated to 180. now that's quite a lot of crumble if you find that you don't use it all this will keep um you put it in the fridge and it'll keep as long as as the butter would keep so quite a long time so next thing then is you spoon your fruit into your bowls. I've got two, like I said, I haven't got a big one, but I'm going to eat one in school and take the other one home. Um, you want to make sure that your fruit is not too mushy, but you can see with my apples, they are starting to soften and, and they'll cook a bit more now as well as they, as they stay in the oven. So I'm going to put some in there and some in there. If you just want to make a little crumble and you don't want to um, you know, use two big bags of fruit because that's quite a lot, then you can just halve the recipe. You can use your math skills to do that. I'm sure you are more than capable. And then it's literally just a case of sprinkling that on. I like to be quite thick. Um, with the frozen fruit, you'll probably find that it um, like mushes down quite a lot. Um, so try, if there is a lot of water or fluid in it, try and just pick out the fruit and leave a lot of the um, liquid behind because otherwise it sort of all absorbs into the crumble and you just end up with like pastry, which is not cool. Okay, so loads of crumble on there. If you want to like smooth it out, you can do that with a fork or with the back of the spoon, whatever. It's really straightforward. Um, and on the top of this, I'll probably sprinkle some cinnamon because I didn't put any into the cooking. Oh, yes. You want to make sure that the fruit is quite compact, otherwise crumble is just going to fall all the way through and more liquid will come out as you cook as well. So that's loads of crumble. But I really do like a thick crumble. <laughs> okay, so all across there. Oop. Make sure all your fruit is covered. Um, I'm just going to do a little sprinkle of cinnamon. Oh, that's loads of cinnamon. Just mix it in because it came out a little bit fast. Okay. okay. And then that just goes in the oven for 25 minutes um, and it should be really nice and crispy. If you want extra crunch on the top, you can add even more sugar. This is so not healthy. Um, it just goes into the oven then for 25 minutes and um, I will take pictures of it and show you once it's done. But there is a worksheet for you guys to fill in um, as well, and I've given you most of the answers in what I've said out loud to you. Just at the time for 25. Um, and any questions, just email me, but I will put a picture up of the finished crumble. Good luck! Yeah.